And I just wanted to touch on uh, the castles on rocks, or uh, well, on mountain tops. And uh, of course, John Levi and Wooden Nichols have been looking into this. Uh, and if you haven't seen Wooden Nichols, I will leave the link to his channel below. And believe me, you do want to go and have a look because it is most probably the most entertaining alternative history channel you will find uh, and definitely informative as well but yeah these castles now we have one here of course let me just don't think the resolution is too good on this but you can still see that this turret you know the whole castle seems to sort of uh, just sort of become the mountain I've got some better shots here. And here is another one. Now, all these castles are in Turkey. Now, you'll find them everywhere. Now, what I find interesting about this is we have this, uh, you know, sort of turret, tower type thing, obviously man-made, sticking out, like literally sticking out of this sort of shale rock type stuff and then if we look down a bit further we see down this area again this tower seems to become rock and this is another cliff top castle uh, another one now this is identified as a castle as you can see, clearly man-made stairs going up here. And with this one, we can see we've got the remnants you know, of a castle top here and a tower. We can even see some uh, what look like windows in here. And then we just have this melted, what looks like melted mass coming down here. And, and look at this rock here. See how we've got this right angle so that's you know that's not natural the top of that but you know we can even see like a half sort of circle here like that might have been a tower just uh, again a castle that becomes the mountain and in here we seem to have some doorways and maybe entrance ways into something else something bigger and here we have another one sitting on top of a cliff, a mountain, and it's the same story. <coughs> Hello kitty cat. Kitty has decided to join the conversation. Ah, she likes castles too. This one's interesting. Uh, as you can see, it's got all these bits all over it which look like bits of wood. Uh, that stick out. You see this a lot in Northern Africa. So I'm not sure exactly what, you know, if, if it's wood or what's protruding there, but interesting. But what I really sort of want to show you is just, you know, again, these bits here. And this is a good one because it seems to go from, you know, something that's clearly man-made, but you can't really see the brickwork. But then down here we can see the brickwork. And it seems to be um, like an outer layer like this has been stripped and maybe so maybe these bits here were you know inside the these bricks and then it comes down to this sort of area and again it just becomes very hard to determine where the castle ends like down here and where the the cliff begins now, over here as well and of course we come down here and then we have this bit where where the mountain just runs into the bricks and you really can't see you know a defining line where they've joined in so you know i would like to hear what the explanation the official explanation of what this is i'm sure <laughs> it would be an entertaining read but you know this is what uh Wooden Nichols and John have been pointing out 
is these just you know ridiculous anomalous castles and uh, wooden nickels has been shown ones uh, showing ones on his videos that literally you can hardly that there's nothing that would uh, you know sort of let, let you think that some of these castles are actually man-made the ones that he's showing uh, but they're clearly marked as castles and they just look like like what we are told are uh, just mountains this one again just sort of you know blending in I mean it looks like there's a little bit of a line on this one which is more than we normally get but just very interesting well okay so uh, I just wanted to So yeah, uh, I wanted to come down here. Now John Levi actually uh, mentioned this on his video that for everyone to go and have a look. And uh, so yeah, this is how easy it is. Just put oldest castles, and I've just put Turkey, and look at the kind of pictures you get. Like, <laughs> look at this thing. Oh, that's a great one. Oh wow, look at that. See all the doorways, man-made doorways, straight into this natural rock that look well, what looks like, you know, what we're told is a natural rock. I'm <laughs> in the middle of reprogramming myself. Uh, I mean, look at this. This looks like, like the top of a building. That is bizarre. So that is the Ortus here, I don't know, <laughs> that's something in Turkey. These are called uh, fairy towers and these you find all over the place but these are also marked as castles. Very interesting, they actually look a lot like the pinnacles uh, in Western Australia. But you just get all these strange, uh, very old, very you know, the more you look into it, the more they sort of, uh, it's questionable, you know, are these things man-made or not? Because, I mean, well, that's clearly man-made. Look how old that is. It's almost worn through. And so these things are uh, everywhere. And you can do it, obviously, on uh, different countries. So... Um, what shall I put in? Let's go. Let's see how the Germans are with marking their castles. I mean, Germany has some awesome castles. Oh my God, look at that. And see, this is, you know, we get these that are, that are perched up on the mountaintops. Still in really good condition. But again, when you look at them, like look at these joins like it, it, like it like there's no joins really it just like look especially this bit here like this is what we're told is natural rock and this is what we're told is man-made but i mean really what's going on here and you can see see this tower we can see a window here and look there's a window there uh, but then this is really just what we are told is natural rock. But this, you know, so is that another window? You know, we have hot crevices and holes and things. So, you know, <laughs> is this just the remnants? Whoops. Is this bit just the remnants? And was this whole... Thing once part of this castle. That is really uh, the question. So some amazing castles, but no, nothing that looks melted here. Uh, you normally find them in uh, more sort of eastern 
Europe that they tend to still mark the the, the much older castles as um, yeah as castles. Let's try Africa just once. Let's just see what's out there that they call castles. Look at that. See, this is out in Africa. That's very old world looking. And castles, of course, everywhere. Here's a nice big star fort. Uh, I've done a few videos, so we know that Africa used to be completely built out. And I mean, look at this. Look at the castles they're showing us here. So there are castles everywhere. Again, not what I'm looking for. I'm just doing this sort of on the fly. But interesting to see just how many castles there still are in Africa. Because I can tell you right now there's a lot more that have been knocked over than are still standing. So there we go. Uh, yeah, so... Check it out yourself, guys. Just go through, you know, oldest castles or, you know, castle. Uh, another one is like castle mountain or castle rock. If you put in things like this, uh, you also tend to get some very interesting pictures of things that may or may not be man-made. So there we go. And I just wanted to have a look at caves. And I've uh, been watching a few videos on caves. And of course we have, you know, the huge sort of uh, caves that we're normally shown with the big stalactites and stalagmites and all this kind of stuff. But... <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> But when I started looking into it, most of the caves around are actually, you know, have very small entrances and they all seem to be in a fairly, uh, fairly similar surrounding, shall we say. So this is a video, this is Bedbug Caves uh, in, uh, it's in the USA, um, Philadelphia maybe. Now, what, what I want to show you here is, can you see all these outcroppings of quite obvious man-made buildings? I've got them here, bits and pieces. Now, the story is that there used to be a factory here. And uh, it used to be a mattress factory. Well, there's actually two stories. One is that there used to be a mattress factory, and that's why it's called Bedbugs Cave. And the other is that there was a slate factory. And these were in the 1860s, and basically uh, the businesses apparently ran down, got abandoned, and it was only 30 years later in the 1890s when they, uh, you know, rediscovered this cave, and they didn't know, they, they still don't know what the actual story is. So within 30 years, we're told that they lost the story of what industry was actually here. Uh beforehand and so now we have all these ruins of some kind of old industry and I want to show you this is just this is marked as a cave a natural cave and they say that the, the industry was just around it and it may have been using the cave but it doesn't say they built the cave but have a look at I mean look at this this is all this is they're saying it's all slate but what do you think about this wall here uh, hang on, I'll just see if I can get a better view. You can see up here there's a wall as well. It's probably not the best view, that one. But when you look around, the entrance to that, look at that. Does that look like a natural sort of cave to you? Especially keeping in mind that we've got all these old walls and everything around everywhere. And this is that the slate and the shale that, that has been shown on other people's videos. Let's see if we can get a bit more of a shot here. I'll leave the link to this guy's channel and uh, to the video. I can't actually remember <laughs> what it's called right now. So here again is the entrance. 
And when you get inside, it opens up into quite a big area. And you can see it's just full of rubble. And so with all these caves, you know, especially the ones that you see, you know, quite low and people crawl through them, uh, how much of those caves is, is actually filled with rubble and mud? So this guy goes down into the cave. And you can see it's, you know, it's a big room. And many caves are like this. They've got this small entrance that you get through and you go down and you end up in this big cavity, this big room. Looks like it's been, you know, it's got all mud, all stuff all over the ground. I don't know, does that look... It's a bit hard to see here. I'll see if we can see... Just sort of wanted to show more of the surroundings of the you see there's all these walls everywhere you can see one up in the background there and it's something that you see a lot you know you see these hills foresty areas and they've got these this old stonework and walls sort of you can see another one there i think we just missed that one um yeah that's a bit of dirt just there See, so we've got all these old ruins. Looks like a bit more of a wall. They just stuff all in the ground. So, is this uh, evidence of past civiliz civilization that's been mud flooded? And these caves are they actually uh, old rooms and you know just basically subterranean floors that are, well, that are now subterranean floors because they've been covered in mud. Okay, so that last video was in Pennsylvania. Now this is Thailand. And it's kind of the same scenario. We get this forest that's grown up around and we just have these just old rock ruins. And we see this a lot uh, in sort of England and Scotland and Ireland in, the, in old movies. These old walls and things, they're just always around. And here we have some pillars by the looks of it. And again, this is Thailand. Uh, it looks like a hole in the ground, but I don't know, are they old world? Just all these anomalous things, bit of a ball there. And it looks like, is that a cave? Just down in there, it looks like there might have been a cave, I'm not sure. But that's, uh, yeah, these areas often are in gullies and things as well, and just have all these funny entrances and caves underground. Looks like there's another one down in there. We'll see what he can find, but uh, foundations of an old huge house. And of course, you know, we would be told this would be uh, colonial, colonialism in the 1800s or so. Uh, but was it really, you know, how old is this forest that's grown up around it? And who was building out here in the middle of nowhere and look at this big rock wall and Thailand's an island as well of course uh, they've got mountains and things but not that you know they don't have tons of rock lying around or quarries or anything and we get these old rock walls in Thailand and these things you know these kind of um, you know forests with the brick walls and the ruins in them they're absolutely everywhere. And this was just a search for cave entrances. And as you look at them, some are quite obviously man-made. But what about the rest? Look at this. Because they always seem to have that similar sort of shape, don't they? The arch. Either that or they just like a crack in the ground like this so you can kind of get down underneath. Something like this. But what really are all these caves? And that's a very nice shaped entrance. So it really is time that we start to question, 
you know, geology and, and what really is around us and what's underneath us. <laughs> I mean, look at these doorways, clearly man-made. Then we get, uh, this is the Bayet Govern Caves. And these are called caves. But clearly, this says here, the ancient tunnel system consists of thousands of man-made caves. Now, I mean, for starters, look how tall that is. And obviously, you know, completely carved out. So was that once above the ground? And it's just been covered up? Because why would you build thousands of miles of caves under the ground when you could build them on top of the ground? Unless they had tech that made it easier, I don't know. This is part of that cave system. And we get this dome, and look at this join. All the way around, where the dome seems to join a wall. And of course, look at the size. And can you see how you can almost see the different joins on the on the plates? I mean, obviously that looks like rock, but what what what's the deal with you know with aging and you know petrification? I mean, we do get these stories, uh, but the truth is there is evidence to go against what we're told and against general theory, as there always is. And here we see fossilized leg found petrified still in his cowboy boot. Okay, we can see the bones and things, and this is quite clearly a cowboy boot. A human leg and foot bones found fossilized to solid stone inside a rubber soled cowboy boot. The discovery was made in a dry creek bed near a West Texan town. How could this cowboy be thousands or even millions of years old inside a century-old boot? Another mystery created by an ancient earth and ancient fossil mythology. Clearly, bone. This amazing discovery by Jerry Stone, <laughs> nice name, in 1980 appears to be a great mystery because the modern naturalistic worldview or evolution of an earth billions of years old describes such fossils as being many thousands or even millions of years old. Therefore, when a cowboy boot of perhaps a hundred years, common rubber sole used in boots began in 1871, was found with a fossilized leg inside it, an apparent paradox emerged. How could this be? The seeming paradox is resolved simply by unlearning the modern worldview of ancient Earth. Whether any fossil is ancient or is neither observable nor testable directly in the present, ancient fossils are based solely on evolutionary assumptions. Uh, assumptions which began with an ancient universe and later planet Earth which spontaneously emerged and self-formed, but no one knows how. Then on this ordinary, randomly formed planet we call Earth, billions of years ago, the biggest assumption of all occurred. All living things spontaneously and randomly emerged and self-assembled from non-living chemicals to become the first simple life forms. But again, no one knows how. Then, very slowly, life evolved. Over millions of years, each generation somehow becoming better and more complex than the previous, because uh, became all the many millions of species of living organisms that live or have ever lived on Earth. And you guessed it, no one knows how. And of course, we have, we have never observed uh, anywhere, even in the fossil, so-called fossil record, any uh, evolution. At least not, uh, so we have macroevolution and microevolution. 
uh, and we have observed, you know, with pigeons, racing pigeons, they can change the look of them, the feathers, all this kind of stuff, beak shapes, in a couple of generations, but it is still a pigeon. Uh, so that is called microevolution, and macro is when you actually change the structure, and that, that would be changing a bird into a rabbit. I think that's right, macro versus micro. Um, time is an... Time is an ingredient in fossilization. Experimentation reveals that fossilization is measured in days, months, or decades. And here's the boot. Fossilized human leg in a cowboy boot. And the story is they found this uh, in a river, riverbed. And, uh, yeah, with fossilized, they got it checked. It's definitely a fossilized human leg. And they even went and they found, because... Uh, it still had the tag on it, or the stamp from the maker, and they actually found the, f the, the place that made this boot back in the 1870s. I think, you know, it had shut down, but they found, you know, sort of the remnants and the descendants of the people. So there you go, a fossilized leg from the 1800s. So, you know, geology really needs to be looked at, because as, as they've said in this article, everything that you know, this, this is just an anomaly that basically blows open everything we've ever been taught about um, geology, fossils, and evolution, and, you know, and especially the time scale needed to produce things like this. And what do we get from the mainstream media? Nothing. They ignore it. This was found in 1980, 40 years ago. Not a peep, not a peep from academia. Nothing. Uh, so here's a few more pics from the governed caves. So again, you know, how, we don't know how fossilization affects, you know, other materials, do we? Because we definitely don't know how it affects organic materials. Uh, look at all this work, you know, clearly man-made, but they're saying this is a cave. So is this a cave here, it's obviously open to the uh, sky. I'm not sure what all these cuts are and all these holes. Lots of them though, all pyramids, all very symmetrical. And, you know, kind of looking a bit like the shape that you see on the outside of dome sometimes. But again, was this, is this a building that has, uh, that is very old and, and looks fossilized? is the question. Uh, this is Egypt. Mysterious, enormous underground labyrinth of Egypt holds secrets kept from the outside world. And they know this is down there. And this is just a sort of a, uh, what's that view called? <laughs> like a cut through view. This is the land and this is what's underneath. And look at the size difference. I think I've actually shown this photo or one very similar in a recent video. But look how big this underneath is, all columns, just completely built out. So you can see the size of the houses to compare to what's down here. Uh, it says the roof of every chamber courtyard and gallery is like the wall of stone. The walls are covered with carved figures and each court is exquisitely built of white marble and surrounded by colonnades. So they've been down there. Um, so should we have a bit of a read? The Lost Labyrinth. Full of hieroglyphs, sculptured for eternity in its endless stone walls, is believed to contain all the knowledge of ancient Egypt. What secrets does this legendary giant underground complex contain? Could this be the most important discovery in human history? The labyrinth of Egypt has been described by a number of ancient writers, such as Herodotus, Strabo, Diodorus and Pliny, the labyrinth's age and ancient origins are unclear, but at the time of Herodotus, it was uh, visited. It was more than 1,300 years old. So there we go. This legendary complex named the labyrinth by the ancient Greeks was... Ah, so that's the labyrinth. Okay. So we're told the labyrinth was in Greece with the Minotaur and that. Now they're saying that this, under Egypt, is the labyrinth by ancient Greeks. Uh, the legendary complex is believed to be an enormous collective tomb of the 12 kings who built it and are resting place for the sacred crocodiles. 
located at Harara. And 90 kilometers south of modern Cairo, the complex contains secret chambers, passages, shrines, and tombs. Herodotus wrote about the labyrinth in the 5th century. It has 12 covered courts, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is interesting because this is called the Hawara, <laughs> Hawa, <laughs> Hawara Pyramid. So, this is a pyramid. And look at the weathering on that. Uh, pretty sure if that was in a Western country, that would not be called a pyramid. And then we have some of the hieroglyphs. And of course, what do we get? Just, you know, geometry, sacred geometry, fractal patterns, uh, things that look very circuit boardy. This, it just actually looks like you know, the design of one of the cities that we see, these square cities, like Angkor Wat, doesn't it? Some hieroglyphs, you've got the four corners, something in the middle, drawn to look like a pyramid. So what is that? Findings of the research team confirmed that there was an that there were archaeological features to the south of the Harari Pyramid of Amenhat the third the scanning showed vertical walls of an average thickness of several meters which were connected to form quite a number of closed rooms reconstruction of the Egyptian labyrinth by Athanasius Kircher uh, copulate engraving purus Babel Civ okay 1690 uh, sorry 1679 so this Okay, this is actually a, de a depiction of the tomb that's underground. So this would be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 king's tombs. Okay, around the outside, around the outside. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, and this in the middle, which I'm not sure what that is. I don't know, they'd say it's their ascension or something. So what is this, 12? You know, the number 12 with 1, we heard that before. Jesus and 12 disciples, 12 days of Christmas, 12, 12, but, and they, they say 12 all the time, 12, 12, but it's always 12 plus 1, if you look at these 12 numbers, so it's actually always 13, and of course 13 is an amazing, awesome number, because I was born on the 13th, so there you go, um, alright, uh, and I just wanted to have a quick look, this is Kaimanara, uh, sorry, <laughs> Kaimanawa Wall in New Zealand. And as you can see, this is just a big ancient wall. There are actually lots of ancient structures in New Zealand, uh, which I should do a video on. But this thing just goes through the middle of a forest. And as you can see, look at the size of these blocks. You know, fitted together, like the blocks we see in Peru, you know, no gaps at all. Whoa, what's going on with my pictures? Um, this guy is measuring angles. And, you know, it looks like it has been faced off on an angle there, doesn't it? So, all man-made, and there's all this. Look at this. Of course, on a hill, and of course, this. I wonder if this is called Castle Hill. <laughs> No, but look at that. Uh, so yeah, here's the wall. This is what I really want to show. Just the wall. And this is in a big wall in big forest. So very similar to what we see uh, around the world, but on a bigger scale. This has probably been carved recently. But yeah, lots and lots in New Zealand. And here... You know, just lots of megaliths, I mean, and joins and stuff out in the forest. Big trees, and that's a pretty sizable tree. Going over this old wall, big boulders lying around. So, you know, as I said before, we are walking on history. It is under our feet. There is so much we're not being told about past civilizations and different resets. Uh, if we look around, you can see the size of these blocks. Clearly, uh, the size of the buildings gets smaller over time. It seems that the people did too. And here we end up in 
2020 in a very strange time and place uh, where much is being revealed. So keep your eyes peeled and let's keep on the trail and get this info out because at this time there's information coming out from so many different angles and really everyone needs the information because it's all bits of the puzzle. You know, if people under, you know, start asking, you know, why are our governments lying to us? Well, if you can show them, well, you know, it starts back a few hundred years ago because they actually wiped out the good civilization and we've actually been taken over. It might, you know, make a bit more sense. So please like, subscribe, share this uh, content, hit the bell so you can be notified of my upcoming videos. And yeah, thank you for spending some time with me. Have an awesome day and I shall catch you on the next upload. Bye for now. Thank you.